Welcome to Lewis the Leopard Stadium. I'm Mac Aljancic for Leopard Football Commitment Night, where incoming freshman football players for Lewis will make their initial pledge to the tradition that is Lewis football. I'm going to right now quickly send it over to Tegan Evans, our on the field reporter, who's going to interview some of our new uh, diaper dandies. Well, leopard football players. So tell me, what is your guys' name and what position do you play? Klein, defensive end. Micah Bricker, left tackle. Jimmy Carlo, running back. Alex Autry, wide receiver. Gavin Burgess, wide receiver. Tyler Dadisman, wide receiver. Okay, awesome. How long have you guys been playing football? Approximately five years. Probably five years. Since I've been a little kid. Three years. Like one year. Maybe five to six. All right, and then did you guys play Little Leopards? And if so, what team are you guys on? Yes, Cowboys and Browns. Yes, I did play. I played on the Packers and the um, Colts. Yes, Cowboys and Bears. Yes, Packers and Lions. Nope. I played for the Rams and the Browns. All right. And then as an individual, what are your goals for this season? Get back to football. Um, make every play and try and be and work at your hardest. <laughs> to make all the plays that I can. Work hard and keep the team together. Uh, get good at memorizing plays. To do my best. <laughs> all right. And then another goal, but for your whole team in general. Win every game this season. Hey, don't give up. To win a lot of games this year. Win together. Be the best. Don't lose too many games. All right. Well, thank you. We'll be back to Mac. And this is, again, this is Tegan Evans with Leopard Lair. Thank you. Thanks, Tegan. This is, I believe, Coach Troy Davis, our Louisville football coach. This is his start. We'll be starting his third season. And this is Troy is a 1991 Louisville graduate. And he's brought a lot of good traditions and new traditions to a program that is one of the great traditions of Ohio, a top 20 winning uh, football program in the state of Ohio. So just to give you a brief overview of what's going on tonight, so our incoming ninth graders are just wrapping up their eighth grade year tomorrow. Uh, they're going to go to four different stations tonight. Um, one is they're going actually in the, the Leopard locker room. I believe Brian Beatty, a legend of Louisville, 1993 graduate who took, helped take Louisville to the first Final Four. Uh, he's given a talk in the locker room. Mark Sigler, who is a 1966 Louisville graduate, is then going to talk with each, each uh, a group of uh, players about Leopard tradition. And then the Leopards are going to through the tunnel, which you can see in the far uh, end zone. Uh, underneath the scoreboard where they'll make their official commitment and talk with Coach Davis. And then uh, Tegan Evans, our 2022 Louisville graduate, is going to touch base with each one of them. We have Neil Seaman will be here with me shortly, uh, all-time great Louisville football quarterback. He'll be talking with us with his assistant, Nash. Uh, we'll meet the, the new Seaman on the block. Uh, so it's going to be a fun night. We're going to get to meet a lot of new leopards, talk to some old leopards, and talk a lot of old tradition stuff. So we got Jake Taggart and Rob Johnson are on the production team here and direction team uh, doing a great job. So we're looking forward to tonight. And I'm going to send it back over to Tegan Evans, who's going to interview another group of Fab Five freshmen. Our least the leopard freshman football players. So tell me, what is your name and what position do you play? Uh, White School Osh and really anywhere the coach wants. Brock Uhanyak and anywhere the coach wants as well. Um, Owen Swope and I'll be playing center. Gabe Stouffer and I'll be playing quarterback. Max Roberts and anywhere. They're playing. All right. How do you guys feel officially being a part of the football team? Feel great. Awesome. Feels good to be part of the team. Um, it's pretty great. Yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty good. All right, and then how long have you guys been playing football? Uh, I played in seventh grade, and that's it. Just started. Um, I played from fifth grade up. Uh, started tackle in fifth grade. Same with Gabe. Started tackle in fifth grade. All right, and then if you guys were on a Little Leopards team, what team did you guys play for? I played for the Bears. No team. Um, I played for the Cowboys and the Colts. I played for the Packers and Lions. Packers and Lions. All right, and then what are your guys' individual goals for the season? Uh, to be the best that I can be. To be the best person I can be. Uh, not to let Gabe get tackled. <laughs> uh, 
Just play hard. Try my hardest. All right, and then as a team, what are your goals? Um, just to get better than I am and just get starter. Just to get to know everyone and be friends with them? Um, to win. Yeah, win. To win. All right, well, that's all. Congratulations, and we'll be back to Mac. All right, thank you. Uh, Louisville legend quarterback Neil Seaman. Neil is a 2009 Leopard graduate. Neil, you remember being – Remember your freshman year becoming a part of the Louisville tradition? Yeah. Yeah, I was just thinking on the way here uh, about 16 years ago, I was where these guys were today. And, uh, man, it's gone by quick. Yeah, Neil's here with his two-year-old son, Nash, <laughs> yep. who's making his television debut. Uh, so, Neil, yeah, let's, yeah. We're, I know we're talking to a lot of these kids. So, what do you remember about Little – who did you, you play for in Little Leopards? So who I were your coach? I, uh, I played for Coach Rill. Coach Rill, that was yep. freshman. Who did you play for in Little Leopards? Little before? Leopards, uh, I was uh, – Tony Warnock, I was a Packer, and okay. I played for the Jacksons as a whole. So okay, major year, yeah. yeah. And the neat thing, a lot of you are familiar with the Lu uh, Lucille Little Leopard program, which is going on, I think it's seventh decade. Um, it started in, I think, the late 50s, early 60s. And unlike most schools, we have you know our own self-contained program right. through eighth grade. So freshmen, that jump to freshman football is different than most because most schools you play together in seventh, eighth grade. Right. And you, but this is like something different where you're playing against each other for many years, and now you're together. So... Tell us about some, who's some of the uh, who's some of the guys you graduated with, and you remember kind of making that jump to freshman year. Who's some of your yeah your so own class? I just want to comment too on the on the program. I think it's great because you got four different teams every class producing multiple uh, players in each position. So as a freshman, it's it's great. Yeah. So and and, and, and I would just back it up with that you have four quarterbacks, you got you know eight running backs, sixteen yeah. receivers. It's different most you get a lot of chance. Yeah. Go ahead talking about your freshman year and your freshman teammates. Yeah. So uh, Brandon Matthews. One of my good friends, good receiver, long, you know, long time friend, uh, Brian Kuhn, Corey Whaley, Matt Faber, Tyler Jones. You know, we we all went through the program early and, and stuck it through all the way through through high school. So, so you had Coach John Rill, who coached probably the Louisville program from the early '70s through about 2010, it's probably 35 years. A legend. Coaching yes. freshman football on wrestling. So who else were there coaches? Coach Kudo, was he your offense coordinator still yep. then? I think Coach Kudo. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So what was it like? We talk about these guys are now coming up there. They dreamed of being a leopard. Now, you were young. Who were some of the leopards you remember when you were younger coming up through? Yeah, so when I was younger, uh, one that rings the bell was Curtis Alsass. He was a, just an awesome athlete, running back, uh, I believe linebacker, right? Yep. Never seen anybody run as hard as he did or hit as hard as he did. And, uh, I mean, he played with a torn ACL as well. So yep. if you if you got to have grit and, you know, be strong to be able to do that, it yeah. was pretty incredible. And kind of along the same line, uh, Austin Powers is always somebody I like to watch playing, yep. too. He was in my sister's class, but I mean, he played with a broken arm. And I remember hitting him head on pretty much as I was a freshman, <laughs> like in, uh, in a practice. And I'm like, wow, this, this guy can hit hard. <laughs> so it, uh, it just showed that, you know, these guys are great players. and. Yeah, hitters. and we'll meet probably, I don't know if we met Braden Elsass, Curtis's son, as a freshman now. And it's kind of, Neil and I were talking beforehand, and some some of the second generation or third generation players that that uh, Neil remembers looking up to. Neil said he was a ball boy. You and some guy named Bobby Swiger yep. really wasn't too bad of a player for Leopards as yeah. well. So you remember being on the sideline when this field was a little older, grass yeah, field, wooden exactly. bleachers. And yep. what was it like remember being a ball boy just watching out there on Friday night? Uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. We had our little uh, pickup game before the game. All the, you know, me, him, Redalia, Robbie, uh, DeMarco, and Bobby. We'd always have a little pickup game, usually compete against the, uh, the other team's ball boys. Yep. We'd always win, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just being around the atmosphere, you know, at that young age, uh, just kind of put in perspective what it was going to be like here, you know, what to expect getting older and being into that, into that role. Yep. into the program so yep. it was pretty cool to see at a young age and i tell you that was a great memory you had your head coach we'll talk about briefly paul fair was your varsity head coach yeah. but i can remember coming over and just watching before after game after games it was basically a playground kids were just playing football on the field and yeah. and that was to be honest when i was growing up my two younger brothers mike and john after all of my games they'd be out in the field playing football and that kind of just that love of the, of the sport is something that's fostered. Even just being under the lights on Friday night and then Little Leopards, unlike most places, you play on the varsity field. And that kind of yeah develops that appreciation, that tradition. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I remember definitely uh, running around the field afterwards and <laughs> sweating or going to halftime, just going to someone's yard and playing tackle football. Yep. Definitely uh, started at an early age. Yeah, and we had to point out Nash. Nash has his own uh, – 
<laughs> leopard tradition. Neil's dad was a Canton layman graduate back in the mid seventies, a great basketball player there. And his grandpa played in Canton too and played for Notre Dame. Yep. He so, did. Yep. And, and both Tom Lehman and then uh, Tom Seaman. I keep saying Lehman. What yeah. the Lehman. And my grandpa, ironically, uh, Andy Klebeck, who used to live in that house right over here, uh, but another N Notre Dame player. So, but Nash's mom, Michelle Monter, and some of you probably know the Monter name, which is very prominent Louisville. And her mom was, and her mom was McAndrew. So yep. Mike McAndrew, great basketball player in the yep. late seventies. And her dad, uh, her dad, Dave Monter, you know, all the Monters came through Louisville and Dave coached in the program for a long time, coached yep. me in freshman, freshman baseball and, and basketball. So Neil, your junior year had a very special year. The only time Lewis has ever made the state finals. And, uh, that was a year where you guys started off. I mean, the farthest loose was ever gone, but you started off not, not started so off hot. A shaky. Yeah. Yeah. We started off two and two. And, uh, I remember having, or we had a meeting in the locker room and the seniors just took over. And from that point on, we just started playing together more, playing harder and just taking one game at a time, not even looking what's ahead, but just focusing on the time at the moment, but also, you know, after that game's over, then who's our next component. And it, yeah, it turned out to be a, a special, special year with a special group. Yeah. And who were some of those seniors for these guys in the, in the, that might not remember? Well, they'll remember since you name them, but name some of those yeah. senior leaders. Yeah, so uh, Clay Swagger, uh, Dan Westlake, John Banasek, Marcus Poyser, J.D. Whaley, uh, Matt Shuley, to name a few. Uh, just a great, great class, great leaders on that team. They really, we really had a whole team buy-in, and I think that's so, so important nowadays in, in athletics. You know, it starts with that that uh, that senior class, those leaders. You yeah. get the total buy-in. I mean, it, your team can be pretty powerful. Yeah, and what I remember from watching that team is those seniors, you know, going back to the leopard tradition, just that passion of refuse to lose. We're going to leave yeah. it all on the field. Absolutely. You know, they had the leopard ultimate warrior face yeah, paint, right, face which paint. started with Coach Farah yeah. in the late 90s, early 2000s. And when he says they went two and two, it wasn't like they were losing a – to nobody's. I think they lost a two point game here yeah, to Lake. A two point games, and yeah. they Lake, who was obviously a great football power, and then another two point game, if I remember right, one or two point game to Northwest, who was in the Vic Whiting era, is one of the team, great, yeah. great teams. Yeah, and great you team. guys, so you guys run the table the rest of the way to go eight and two the regular season. And game one, I believe, in the playoffs, you played rematch with Lake. Yep. What do you remember about that game, Dustin? The memories yeah. off. Yeah, so uh, I remember uh very close game came down the wire but one specific play that stuck out was when brandon was supposed to run like a curl and he just ran a fade and he had no no direction prior to the snap and i just read him and we just chucked it deep for a touchdown that was just something that always go along with us forever yeah just and, that, that special moment yeah and brandon is you know from what I, he's brandon maddie the maddies are a huge part of uh Louisville leopard uh athletics his grandfather ed phenomenal athlete in the late 50s all right and then brandon's uh dad brian was a quarterback in the early mid 80s bruce his uncle or was a quarterback i played with brent maddie in the late 80s but brand one of the really one of the great receivers in loose history he's yeah. made a lot of clutch catches you guys probably arguably one of the best one two combinations how did you guys develop that rhythm that magic you or know, just it, i think it just started at an early age we were always we became best friends probably around four or five and we were always uh just throwing the ball around and then uh just that chemistry further developed as we got older yep so we'll tell we'll let's walk through our, your playoffs so you knock off lake week one mm -hmm. all right week two i think you go down and was that the game at new philadelphia stadium i'm trying yeah, to remember yeah. and you guys played one of the valleys tri valley tri valley, tri -Valley. Tri -Valley. Yep. Yep. And what, what do you remember about that game? <laughs> Make you work, you old yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, I know. The memory uh, isn't too sharp yeah. in some spots. But I think that was a comfy win, if I'm right. Yeah, it was, I mean, definitely a hard-fought hard win. Uh, definitely won in the trenches, I'm sure. Yeah. And, and then, then came the big, uh, I think the big pivotal moment of the playoff run. You faced Columbus to sales, sales. in the regional yep. championship. Columbus Sales is state power. Unbelievable. Program, I don't remember yeah. the, the defending state champions, but mm -hmm. but you came in as a heavy underdog. Yep. And I remember talking to Coach Davis, who I played with in high school. They just talked about assignment football. Absolutely. I believe Joe Palmisano. Yep. I don't he remember came he... in for that week and helped coach, coach the yeah. front line. I mean, just unbelievable game. Uh, the technique that our defense stuck to is just incredible. I mean, they, they were taught to do certain things and they executed on the field and that just showed. Yeah. Coach Paul Masano is former Malone coach and the uh, long time WHBC uh, personality. I remember coach Troy telling me that literally that week they would practice without a football. So they played yeah. it, the veer, I forget what type of option, the veer option or something like that, where you had assignment. So 
somebody would tackle the initial handoff to the fullback. Yep. Somebody's assignment was a quarterback and the pitch man, and then came out. The defense did their job, and you guys offensively got it done as well and pulled off one of the great, great wins in Lewisville yeah. history. Yeah, it definitely goes down as one of the top wins in, in the career. All right, and then, wow. then we, the semifinals, second time Lewisville history made that. Uh, we wow. talked about Coach Brian Beatty uh, being part of the, being the MVP of the team that made it to the 1992 state semifinals. So you played – I can't remember if you played Mayfield or played at Mayfield. It was in May Mayfield. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to play some team with white uniforms. White and green, yeah. <laughs> white and green. But anyways, you came there and you guys pretty much took yeah, care of business. Yeah, we, we did take care of business. That was uh, a lot of another game that was a lot of fun. Got us to that next round, which is what we were all hungry for. Yeah, and I'll give props or whatever I remember that from about 14 years ago is Louisville for some reason. We travel so well. We tend to get the the bad end of the deal for like neutral, they're supposed to be neutral sites team games, yeah. but we played a team. I, I can't remember. It was somebody up in Cleveland. We played literally in Cleveland and we packed our side of the stadiums and the fans are pumped up. And it was a, it was a great victory. And it was a great time. First time really Louisville teams ever made the state finals from what I recall. And then Paul Brown Fawcett, Paul Brown tiger stadium. Uh, you faced Cincinnati, Cincinnati Anderson, Anderson, which yeah. was a behemoth of just huge size guys. And I know you guys came out, Slow, they built up a lead. You got made a pretty good run at, uh, at the yeah. end. You got gave yourself a shot. What do you remember about that? I think you go down two, three touchdowns, maybe. Yeah, we, uh, yeah, like you said, we start off a little slow. They they came out firing offensively, and uh, they they had a great receiver, great quarterback that really threw it up there. So we right from the get go behind. But I mean, if we had a, just a couple more plays or a couple more minutes, I think we would have been a little different outcome. Yeah, but uh, definitely a hard hit, cold game. I mean, it was. Yep. Uh, it was definitely a hard hit game. And one thing just that I guess I remember just the size of Cincinnati Anderson is Matt Shuley, who was an all state defensive end, and he was huge, probably six four. Yes. Yeah. Just a man. And he was going against them. They had some big three hundred pound tackles or you know, Matt went from being the giant on the field to just, uh -huh. you know, size wise, just another guy. But you yeah. guys battled hard, made Lewisville proud. Uh, even when it looked like I think when they had stretched the lead out, you guys battled back offensively, got to one score. We just couldn't get that last – that clock at a right. couple of minutes or so. We might have got that. But, yep. you know, great season, one of the most memorable useful history. Um, and it's something that we can be proud of for a long time. All right. All right, we're going to take a break right now. We'll be back in just a little bit. All right, we're back at Lewis Leopard Stadium for Leopard Football Commitment Night with the freshmen, and we're going to send it over to Tegan Evans for another group of freshmen to be. Thank you, Mac. I'm here with some of our freshmen football players. So tell me, what are your guys' names and what position do you play? Um, I play wide receiver and corner. What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> Drew Gaspar. Uh, my name's Dylan Martin. I play uh, guard and nose guard. I'm Ethan Kelly. I play um, offensive line and DM. Uh, Luke Seaman, wide receiver and safety. Uh, my name is Colton Rose, and I play wide receiver and safety. My name is Colton Norris. I play wide receiver and cornerback. All right, and how long have you guys been playing football? Three years. Four years. Three years. Uh, four years. Four years. Four years. All right, and then did you guys play Little Leopards? And if so, what team were you guys on? Um, I did, and I was on the Bears. Uh, I also did, and I was on the Browns. I also did, and I was on the Bears. I did, too, and I was on the Lions. I did, and I was on the Lions. I did, and I was on the Colts. All right, and how do you guys feel officially being football players for Louisville? Good. Uh, wonderful. Very well. Amazing. <laughs> Great. Great. And then individually, what are your goals for this season? Just have a good season. Uh, to take home the W. Get the dubs. <laughs> Get the wins. Win. Have a running, winning record. And then as a whole team, what are your goals for each other? Uh, just have a good season. Have a good time. Have fun. Have fun. Win. Have fun. All right, that's all. Congratulations. We're going to take it back to Mac. Thank Hey, back. this is Mac Algenisic back with Neil Seaman, legendary Louisville quarterback, class of 2009. And we should mention Neil made the uh, 
was it got the honor of making the Louisville Sports Hall well, of Fame just this past well, fall. Well, His down. sister Leah was an all-time great Louisville basketball player, class of 2006, is also a Louisville uh, Sports Hall of Famer. How was it growing up with your big sis? How did she uh, toughen you up some or oh, yeah. play she, some battles she together? She was always bigger than me, so uh, she was always beating me up. But yeah, just she was always shooting hoops outside or running around. Always, uh, always competing. We were always competing when we were younger. Yeah, and I got the honor of taking eighth, eighth grade teacher, twenty nine years, uh, twenty seven here at Lucille Middle School. So I taught Leah and got the uh, got the coach uh, Neil back in the day in eighth grade basketball. Yeah. With a really good group of guys. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about your senior, and I should make one correction. I threw Neil for a loop because in the state semifinals they played Mayfield yeah. at Bedmer. I said we played at Mayfield, so that was the big win they he remembers. So your senior, year, you come back with a you know, now you're the man. You're one of the men. You know, putting mm -hmm. the shoulder of the seniors. You guys had a phenomenal ten and zero regular season. Any right. certain games you remember from the regular season that ring a bell? Uh, Hoover was a great game. I know we were going up against their all time running back, and our defense just played phenomenal that game. Really stood up. Yeah. So Stand that was at Hoover out right here. I'm that was about. at Hoover. Yeah. So that's at Hoover and Eric. I'm trying. Eric Howard. Eric Howard. Yeah. Two time Mister Football. Yep. And I still remember both years. Lewis will just owned him. He had nothing. He could get nothing going. The defense just totally dominated. And, yeah, it was a huge victory over, as us old leopards know, the, the pumpkin heads are, uh, they get our blood fired up. Yeah. And you guys yeah, took always, care of business. Yeah. Usually week two, we're ready. You know, that's always a game we're looking forward to. Yes, yes. So that was special. And then you guys made the playoffs. Do you remember your playoff run? I know the sales then got us in the this, in this, uh, yeah, regional no. finals. I'm trying to remember before that. You remember we had a team who? up in Cleveland, I believe. And, uh yeah, to sales for sure. Yeah, and to sales, I remember you guys played, I think, at Mansfield. Does that sound right? Yep. Down me played at Mansfield. Mansfield. And to sales, I remember that year, I think they had about six D1 kids. Yeah. yeah and that yeah. was just where, I mean, you're playing against guys that are playing on Saturday afternoons in the big time. But you guys put up a great fight. Couldn't quite get it done, but the great season. Tell us a little about playing for Coach Fair and you know, Coach DeMarco was your offense corner. What are some memories of playing under those coaches? Yeah, so uh, Coach DeMarco, I got to know him kind of at an early age through Little Leopards and then. Uh, through, through the whole program. I really admired him, his style, learned a lot from him. Uh, great coach, uh, same with Coach Farah. He, uh, he definitely got the best, best out of us. He, he'd fight for us. Uh, he made us work hard. So, I mean, all around, the whole staff was amazing. Uh, great group of guys uh, through my career, through my senior career. So, what were some things in particular, I mean, you felt they emphasized with the program. What were some of their expectations or what they expected of, of you guys? Were they expected to carry on loose tradition? Anything yeah, come I mean, to mind? I mean, part of that, you know, is winning. I mean, we want to we want to win every week. So they're going to put us in the position through technique, through coaching every week, through preparation, through film work to get us there. So as long as we execute, we have a, we have a great shot of accomplishing that goal. So just the, the weight room, the technique, the film, you know, it, yeah. Their style of coaching, it works. Yeah, and I've known Coach Ferris since I was probably not much older than Nash here. Uh, he's probably about four or five. I think Paul's class 85. And one thing I know about Coach Ferris, he's just a competitor. Absolutely. And, I'm, and I know he pushed that with his players all, just compete. Absolutely. Yeah. To the end. So, Neil, after his great career at Louisville, set a lot of records. And our producer, Rob Johnson, just reminded me that he remembers watching a state championship game just a few years ago so 2017-18 they still referred to neil having some passing Daddy records from a state championship game in division two uh but you went on to mount union yep which is another great tradition especially in the last 30 years since uh, larry Carris took over and uh had a great career but had dealt with injuries that so unfortunately that's part of football and yep. tell us a little bit about your mount union career yeah, so uh, as a freshman, I had opportunity to get some playing time at quarterback. Uh, I rotated with Kurt Rocco, who was a phenomenal senior, senior quarterback, leader on that team. Uh, some of the main players I played with that some might know is Cecil Shorts. He played in the NFL as a Jaguar. Yeah. Learned a lot from him as an early age, uh, coming into the freshman year, being able to throw to him. Uh, another another senior, uh, Kyle Miller. Yep. He played in the professional for a few years as well. But uh, just the culture between the two is very similar. You know, there's a total buy-in in the program. Everybody played for themselves. Really strong traditions, both from Louisville to Mount Union. And then playing for Coach Karras. I mean, I nothing but good things to say about him. I learned so much from the quarterback position to life and how to manage time. So uh, definitely took a lot of good things away from playing football and, and going to school at Mount. Now, Neil, went into the, he said he went into his career. Uh, had some shorter issues here with your labrum, and then your was it your freshman, sophomore year? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of 
aggravated it worse, a lot worse. Yep, so I had the, the shoulder fixed when I was at Mount, and then ended up uh, hurting my knee and ankle. And you're down saying the road. which one you hurt right before the stag bowl, right? So. Yeah, yep, that was my, uh, my ankle. Yeah. So, and then, yeah, so and the next year the knee. So yeah, it just comes with the game, you know. You know, there's going to be injuries. Yeah, it's kind of rolling the dice, and sometimes forward, it yeah. comes up snake eyes. Yep. So, well, we want to thank Neil for joining us for the special night for these freshmen. And Neil, what's one last thing like you'd want to like? So these guys are coming in going to be for freshmen. What's one last thing you'd want to share with them just about representing Lewis will represent the the leopard head here and being part of this tradition? Yeah, I'd say definitely. You know, coming together as one and working hard on the field, but also off the field. I mean, a lot of the people that are successful, you don't know what they're doing on the outside because that's why they're working, you know? Yeah. Being able to grind on the outside, doing that extra rep, running that extra sprint, you know, putting that time in off the field when no one's watching is really going to put you in a position to exceed, I think. Yeah. And well, I got to add one more question because, Neil, why don't you tell a little about what you do now because I know your success on the field, but that work ethic paid paid off and you have a successful career of uh, – Great family. You want to tell a little bit about what you're doing now? Yeah, so I, as I went to Mount Union, I got a, a degree in mechanical engineering. And then through that, I've been working at the Timken Company for the last seven and a half years as a uh, sales engineer. Right. And so, I think Nash saying he's ready, ready, yeah. ready to yeah, end the so, interview. Yep, and Nash has been a trooper during this whole thing. There you go. Well, well we want all the chatter in the background. Yeah, we <laughs> want to thank Neil Good for job, joining man. us there. Appreciate his contributions See, tonight and his contributions to our community and to our great tradition. Thanks, Neil. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yep, thank yep. you. We'll be back in a little bit. Hey, we're back at Lewis Leopard Stadium for Leopard Football Commitment Night. I'm here with Leopard Assistant Football Coach and running back legend Brian Beatty. We're going to talk to him a little bit, but first we're going to send it over to Tegan Evans for another group of freshmen's to be. All right. Thank you, Mac. I'm here with some of our freshman football players. So tell me, what is your name and what position do you play? Hi, I'm Braden Elsass. I play running back and linebacker. Hi, I'm Owen DiMargio. I play running back and linebacker. Hi, I'm Asma Roberts. I play right tackle and defensive end. Hi, I'm Roy Newell, and I play center. All right. How long have you guys been playing football? Uh, four, four years of tackle. Four years of tackle as well. Last year is my first year. None. None? All right. Um, did you guys participate in Little Leopards? And if so, what team were you on? I did all four years. I was on the Chiefs and the Colts. I did all four years as well. I was on the Cowboys and the Browns. I was on the Browns. I didn't do it. <laughs> all right, and then tell me, what are your goals for you as an individual this season? Um, my goals are to at least score a rushing touchdown a game. Uh, I have the same goals as Braden. All right. My goal is to just start. My goal is to do okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and then what are your goals for your team as a whole? Um, I would like to go 10-0. and at least start off the year as seven and three. Just beat Glen Oak. Go five and zero. I'm sticking to that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, congratulations. Thank you for joining me, and we're gonna go back to Mac. Thank you. Hey, we're back. Thanks, Tegan. I'm here with Coach Brian Beatty, uh, and I'm just talking to Brian. We're gonna talk a little about what you remember coming into your freshman year. Who'd you play for, Little Leopards? First of all, play for. Uh, my dad, I actually played for the Rams to start off with. Uh, Who was your coach at the Rams? Oh, remember? Coach Thomas. I'm trying to remember his first name, but yeah. Oh, shoot. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a minute. I know Mr. Reed was one of our co assistant coaches, yeah. but yeah. Then I played for the uh, Colts, yep. my dad, then after that. so Yeah, so yeah. what did you remember? So you came in, and he came in, I think, your freshman year. He was the same age as my brother, John. I had just graduated. Yep. And Lewis was just starting to make the transition to the federal, from the Federal League, where Lewis was fortunately taking their lumps towards the end of the 1980s in the NBC. What do you remember coming into about dreaming of being a Leopard? And Yeah, I think it all started that eighth grade game. I can remember that. Uh, and everyone coming together, uh, you know, you just saw the excitement of Leopard football. And we, you know, I think our class was very competitive against each other. So it was nice to all come together. You know, you had the different schools, the Fairhope, North Nim. PG and St. Louis kids all together yep. finally. So it was kind of neat seeing that all come together. Uh, I can remember we were the uh, last team to wear the blue helmets as freshmen. Ah, yeah. So the varsity wore white that year. So we were the last uh, team to uh, wear the blue helmets and uh, uh, had a great team and went on, you know, had a lot of success with that team. Yeah, uh, I think we you guys ran the table, yeah, right? We who who coached freshman year. that year? Uh, that was uh, Coach Real, Coach Hall. Um, 
that was Coach Farah's first year of coaching. Yeah. Coaching was freshman. A, a freshman football. And uh, I think Coach Kudo came along also a little bit that okay. year. So, cool. yeah, a lot of names that have been around. And that uh, Coach Real, he's dearly missed. He was a he was a old school, a great guy to have at the uh, freshman level, that's for sure. Yeah, and Coach Real, a lot of you know Coach Real, whether it's a teacher or as a coach. Yeah. He was traditional old school yeah. phys ed, a voice of God almost, yes. I'll say. Yeah. Uh, but... Beyond that intimidating exterior, he was a man of principle and a man that kind of set the principle for his own players of yeah. character and, yeah, and, there was, and yeah, attitude, character, and enthusiasm. He was all, you know, I've kind of lived by those words when he uh, always preached that. So, yeah, yeah that was important yeah, him and for sure. Guy Hall, a yeah. longtime coach. And yeah. I got, and ironically, me as a teacher, I, I played under him, and then uh, I didn't get the chance to play from freshman, but I knew him all. Yeah. And then I got to teach alongside him, saw yeah. a different side <laughs> of him, but that was a blessing to learn from both sides. And I do have to give a shout out to my little leopard coaches. I played uh, for the Chiefs uh, with uh, Mr. Bosler, yes. and, uh, and then I played for the Bears, Harry Jordan, a yes. long time. Yeah. And then uh, Tom Gooling, whose uh, grandson, Zach Seaman, just graduated and then part of the district championship baseball yeah. team and exactly. so forth there. So, yeah. Wrap up your freshman year, great year, mm -hmm. all right? Having that, and like you said, joining together after doing the little leopards there, and then you go on the varsity level. Lewis will just start in the NBC. Yes. And kind of you guys kind of turn around your your sophomore year, you went 7-3, you were the starter yes. of the sophomore. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about your sophomore, junior years a little bit with playing with some really neat groups ahead of you, especially the class ahead of you with a lot of nice players. Yeah, right? class ahead of us, you know, a lot of us played baseball together, you know, hot stove, and, you know, we were Camelot Music, the old Beatty Sports Shop team, so, you know, the Arnold DeHennies, you know, those kids, uh, you know, so we, we knew we had a great foundation coming up, you know, and that really that senior class, my sophomore year, were great leaders to really start turning the program around. I think we were heading the right direction. Um, I know one thing, you know, a lot of people talk about now, uh, we kind of started the bonfires that sophomore year, yep. Thursday night, we'd come to our house and just order pizza, you know, and that was a tradition that's been going on now gotten huge the, yeah the Thursday night tradition so we kind of started that I remember doing that and uh yeah there was uh our you know sophomore year seven and three uh, back then you only took four teams in the playoff we missed the playoffs that year but uh junior year we ended up there that was the first uh playoff team in Louisville history yeah, you guys so. went nine and one nine uh, and tri champs of the NBC for right with yes. Minerva and West Branch. West Branch lost a tough one at West Branch and beat Minerva at West for, Branch yeah yeah yep so we went there and uh Went on and played Lake uh, to a, uh, it was a 13-7, like something like that. 13-7, yeah, it was like, a one right? score, yeah. One and that was Matt, was that Matt Christopher's senior year? Yeah, Matt Christopher and uh, Steve Lippy were both linebackers. Yeah, I think Matt was, I can't remember if he was Mr. Ohio Knight. He played yeah. Ohio State yeah, and dealt with injuries, State, but yeah. he, was, he was he was the man. Yeah, it was a long night getting hit by those two all night, that's for so sure. So two great years, and like I said, you're talking about when you're sophomores, like Joe Greco is probably yeah. a lot Joe of you Greco, know, he's a long-time yeah. teacher at Lewis, so one of that. Yeah. And then your junior year, you talk about Todd Henning and Rob Arnold, a couple of great college athletes in yes. football and baseball. And then so your senior year, all right, so you guys ran the wishbone your sophomore and junior years yeah. under Coach Coach uh, Chrislip, and then your senior year, Coach Chrislip decided to open it up there. Yeah, right? we just spread it out. We'd uh, always open the game up in the wishbone, but uh, it was always in the first series, the first least play was always in the wishbone, but uh, we opened it up. We had more of a spread offense, more of what the traditional EC spread, more of an eye type yeah. running back in uh, formation, you know, Chris Romanege, and, uh, you know, he's full back, full yep. back and he was a – a horse back there so uh some great linemen some great kids and uh i think the, it, we we gelled as a unit that that whole year i mean that whole school year was great with baseball and basketball we had some nice runs and wrestling we had some great wrestlers so that senior year i think really really kicked in the tradition that we have you know the continued yeah. tradition i think and it got going the right way after first that. undefeated regular season i think 10 and 0 season i yeah. think since like 1971, mm -hmm. I think, yeah, with uh, I think so. with um, Ken Kuhn, I believe, that group. But So two games I remember from that, and I'm sure you remember. One is game one, opening mm -hmm. against those pumpkin heads over yes. at North Canton. Yes. Uh, just a slug out battle. I think it was 14-7. I think yeah. Hoover, the last play of the game, was on the one-yard one yard line. line. Yeah, and uh, actually, Christopher Menegay had a stop and a fumble recovery on the one. But, uh, uh, yeah, that was a great game. Uh, some They had some great athletes. They had the Tate twins and uh, – uh, Ren Blatt, it's a, that was a nice ball too. Yeah. So yeah, it was nice opening it up against Hoover and getting that win and starting the yeah. season off on the and, right foot. Yeah, and we're on Stragat Media. Uh, sometimes some of you, I'm sure on Facebook, see Leopard Nation. Jared Heller does that, and Jared will put highlights of yeah. old games. And I watched, oh, I yeah. think it's past uh, past fall during the Hoover week. They put mm -hmm. that on, saw that play. So that's one game, and then week I believe nine, you come over and face West Branch in a rematch. Yeah. They're yeah. eight no, we're eight no. I think it was number one, number two in the state. Yeah. 
And it was. Uh, they were number one. We were number two. So. And it didn't uh, end up like that after no, the game. No, that was a uh, – we dominated from the uh, from the coin flip on that ball game. Uh, people are still happy about it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was uh, – that was a domination. Uh, the one thing I can remember, uh, you know, we, we didn't dress here. We walked up from the uh, locker room at the yep. high school. And uh, before we got here, two and a half hours before the game, it was already filled. Yes. And the atmosphere in the place. I, haven't, I don't know if it's ever been like that, but uh, it, was, it was a great atmosphere and a great ball game. But uh, I know that was, that was one we could remember for a long time. Yes. So, yeah. I remember the Leopards jumped out 31 yeah, nothing. at halftime. It was yes. a special game. Yep. Shout out to my Muskegon College football coach, Jeff Haycock. He led us. We always had curfew that nice. night. That was the one I said. You said, you know, he's a West Branch guy, yeah. so you can go home and watch your brother. Nice. So I appreciate that. So Perfect. knock off them. We go in the playoffs, start yeah. down 14 nothing, playing uh, Revere, Revere at the Fawcett. Fawcett, yeah. And you it's had a huge night. game that night. You had a big run to finish it off, I remember, right? Yeah. Yeah, we had uh, another great team win. Uh, I know Bob had, Burek had a big touchdown in that game. Uh, Defense really played well. Joe Case, uh, Richard Eslidge both had huge sacks in that game. And yeah. uh, I know we got the ball down. I think we were tied. And I remember we they kicked the ball, punted the ball in the end zone, and uh, started to drive from the 20. We ran it right down. That's the right. And I remember uh, Jeremy McCoy and Harry yeah. Mannis saying, "The ball's coming right here. Stop <laughs> it!" So, <laughs> yeah. So, and they didn't, and we ended up winning that game. Yeah. Okay. So, we're gonna take a break real quick, and we'll be right back. All right. Thank you, Mac. I'm here with some of our freshmen. So, tell me, what are your guys' names, and what position do you play? David Huff and line and corner. Kane Johns. I played all over the place. Kyle Deem, I play running back and defensive line. My name's Anderson Candle. I play quarterback and cornerback. All right, and how do you guys feel officially being a part of this team? I feel good. Pretty good. I feel excited. I feel good because all of our teammates will be together now. All right, and then how long have you guys been playing football? Two years now. Four years. I've been playing since the beginning of Little Laps. I've been playing since first grade. All right, and then if you guys played for Little Leopards, what team were you on? Colts. Colts. I was on the Cowboys and then the Lions. I was on the Cowboys and the Browns. All right, and then what are your guys' goals as an individual for the season? Do my best. Go 10-0. Try my hardest. Um, just try my hardest and have a winning record. All right, and then what are your goals for your whole entire team this year? Go 10-0. Go 10-0. Have a winning record. And have a winning record. All right, and that's all. So congratulations. We're going to take it back to Mac. Thank you. Thanks, Tegan. I'm back here with Coach Brian Beatty, and we were just we're going to wrap up talking about playoffs. So the great '92 season, uh, the first Final Four team in Louisville history, first team to win a playoff game. So we talked about you guys knocked off Revere, faced uh, went to Boardman to face Youngstown Cheney, and I remember yeah. that was one of your biggest games there. For yeah, remember, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, that was that was a cold big night. Night. Uh, yeah. Cold night. Uh, you know, we played in uh, up at Boardman against Youngstown Cheney, and uh, that was another just team effort from the kickoff on. Uh, we dominated. And they could uh, roll like thirty-four yeah, six, maybe thirty-four around. six. It was. It, uh, I guess it was. It was tied at halftime, but we had some nice defense plays, some interceptions, and uh, yeah, offensively we had everything clicking that night. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, faced. I draw the blank. Face Fostoria, Fostoria then the yeah. state semifinals, and you. I have a few people remember that, but that was I think the day after Thanksgiving, and yeah. the day after that, you uh, yeah, had an appendectomy. Yes. Yeah. So. So we played Fostoria. Was not tough. Tough yeah, game. Tough game. They had uh, some great, great athletes on that team, and yeah. uh, we just ran into a buzzsaw, and uh, we played our hearts out, but had some kids we just couldn't stop. We yeah. didn't match up well, and. Uh, End of the season in state semifinals. So, yeah, especially yeah. your Damon Moore, yeah. who Damon played Moore, the State quarterback played for yeah. the Raiders for a while. Yeah, and Eagles. Yeah, yeah. So, that was so, yeah, they had some good ball players. Yeah, special memory, a great yes. year. Brian that year, I believe, set the single season rushing record. Yes. And, mm -hmm. and I can't remember if you had the career record or not, probably at that point. Yeah, I had the career record at that yeah. point. Too, I know yeah. Dan Wilson was a sophomore. Dan, yep. another great, we were talking about great running backs. Yeah. Dan graduated two years later yep. with that. And Brian. It's probably probably the best running back I ever saw at Louisville. I did not see Bob Gladio. I know he played alongside my uncle, but from talking to the old timers, Brian was very similar of shifty and power, and uh, yeah. he was a pleasure to watch. And now Brian, since then, he's given back the program. His his uh, father, Greg, has been a longtime coach, yeah. you know, a volunteer coach. He actually, when I was in high school, he started helping out, and he, of course, he runs Beatty Sports Shop, but. Brian's been helping with the program for a while now. He helps with the running backs, right, or the yes. receivers, a little bit of running backs. Running yeah. backs. Mm -hmm. and, and, Brian, tell me about what's uh, some of the things Coach Davis is instilling in the program and 
hoping to build with these guys as freshmen and beyond? What are some things you see in the program? Yeah, I see. I see he's continuing the tradition of Leopard football. You know, and that's that's important. You know, and he he bleeds blue. I mean, there's not a man I, that I've ever met that probably that diehard and you know Leopard blue. There's you know he he does it. Um, and he does it the right way. Uh, I think, you know, this night tonight with the uh, freshman signing days and the, you know, a new tradition he yes. started now, we've done this. I think this is our fourth year on that or third year. And, um, you know, all the traditions he's, he's keeping them alive. You know, there's not a lot you really have to change. You just got to keep it going and uh, keep the culture. Um, and he, he has the kids believing in leopard football again. So that's, that's important. I don't think it's ever really vanished, but, you know, keeping that, dream alive that you want to win that state championship someday. Yeah, and I know we've had a great, from what I understand, a great offseason of lifting. Yes. Louisville, unfortunately, with us being independent now, it's a very tough scheduling. Mm -hmm. And Louisville in the last couple of years just facing a brutal schedule, playing five federal league schools, all almost double our size. Yeah. Uh, this year we pick up week one against another Ville, Steubenville. Steubenville, yeah. I mean that. And so, but the I think river. the Leopards, you know, uh, Tyler Kwasnekia is our new strength and yeah, conditioning strength coach, coach yeah. there. We're working with My Fit Life as well. And mm -hmm. uh, it seems like kids are really buying in. And I'm sure once the exciting baseball season, which wraps up here, we'll even get yeah. more of our guys together. Yeah, it, it's been a great off season. The kids are bought into the program. Uh, you know, there's a coach that has a lot of incentives. He has a, uh, a workout program, you know, uh, ran – by my fit that they're doing a great job with that. And then, you know, they have some early Friday morning challenges where they, uh, you know, can win awards that way. So the kids are bought in, you know, it's now it's just starting to get the X and O's down and uh, compete. So, yeah. So Brian also contributes. He's our president of our touchdown club yes. and the touchdown club started, I'm going to say in 1986 when I was a sophomore in high school by yeah. Doyle Schmucker, Doyle Schmucker yeah. who, uh, at that point, just he almost put the program in ways on his shoulders. He would literally mow the mow yeah. and take care of the field. The yard start, we've always had the Louisville Booster Club, but he started the Touchdown Club mm -hmm. and built up a great tradition there. And now Brian's carrying that out. What are some things the Touchdown Club does for our program? And yeah, the Touchdown, it's a, it, you know, it's an honor to run the program. It's been you know ran since Doyle, and they've been some great past presidents. But uh, everything we do and all the money we raise goes right back into the program. Um, you know, one thing we're we're proud of, you know, we, we have scholarships. We offer the kids at the end of the year. Uh, we provide all their camp shirts, camp shorts, uh, all the two day meals, all the pregame meals, Gatorade, um, any of the equipment, uh, such as sleds, uh, cameras, uh, headsets for the coaches, things like that. Uh, last year we spent over $54,000, you know, wow. so that, and it all goes back to the program. Uh, so anytime we get, uh, you know, donations and, uh, members, we're always looking for new members, and it's you know nice having the the members in the meetings. Uh, we meet on uh, during the season on Thursday night at different restaurants in town. Uh, coach comes in and talks about the uh, past game and the upcoming week, so it's a nice little uh, gathering, and we go over some small business stuff. And but it's a it's a great group of people and uh, a great organization to be part of for sure. Great, and it's a lot of a lot of you know the Louisville tradition special. It's been around for. Almost a century now, I believe yeah. 1924, maybe mm -hmm. we started. So we're yeah. getting up on that. And I'm looking right here in this beauty in the entrance of our beautiful stadium and Dale Nub McKim. Yeah. Uh, he's one of one of the great contributors, but yes. takes people like Nub. Nub was a long time Leopard coach mm -hmm. and then became an administrator in Little Leopards uh, since the late 50s, even. But p him, like people like him, we could write off a ton yeah. of names of people behind the scenes that do that little extra. To make Lewis yeah. what it is. There, there's a lot of the great family. Like you said, you can go on forever. The Beeries, you know, the, uh, the bishops. There's a bunch of them that's been around and helped this program out. And, you know, you're thankful for everything. Because we wouldn't have, I mean, our facilities. I was just uh, talking to all the freshman parents. You know, I fit the, the kids in the helmets every year. And I take pride in that. And I told them, you know, I could probably fit over 500 kids during the summer. But our equipment's right up there with any small college or any program yeah. out there. So, you know, we, we take care of the kids, you know, safety-wise in their equipment and then the extras they get throughout the season. Yeah, and Brian's day job. I don't know if it's a day. It's all the yeah, time. But yeah, it's Brian time. works for, yeah, he he outfits teams across Northeast Ohio, yes. right? Yep. Yeah, so, I mean, how many schools do you work with now? Uh, about 35. 35. And I do a laundry service, and I do uh, – I got 18 schools. I pick up laundry on Saturdays and Sundays. So, yep. if anybody wants to volunteer and help out, they can. So Yeah, Brian and I were talking earlier today. You know, he goes – travels around. But his family tradition, I didn't realize till today, was – they travel around the, the county trucks, and yeah. Milk, yeah. milk trucks, yeah. So, and Brian remembers going with around with his dad before yeah, he yeah. got in the sporting good yeah. 
Yeah, Dad started in uh, Little Leopards in the Booster Club when he was 18. Wow. Yeah, so it was a night to get out on the, you know, with the guys. And, yes. Uh, started when he was 18, he just turned 70, so yeah, he's been doing it for for a while. Yeah, so, and yeah. special guys like, yeah, Greg is a, a huge contributor. You've seen your brother Eric now Eric, is coach yeah, of Leopards for Leopards. probably 10 plus years. Oh, yeah, and, and that's least, the neat yeah. thing about Louisville, it's generational generation. tradition. Yeah, that's And that's sure. special special for that well brian appreciate you talking with us appreciate, appreciate you contributing in so many ways to our program yes great seeing you friends mac yep thank you we'll be back in a second hey this is mac algensic back at lewis leopard stadium for leopard commitment night i'm here with a couple of head coaches uh troy davis our varsity head coach and kevin curry our freshman head coach and before we talk about tonight i'm going to ask real briefly you guys are both uh, Leopard alumni, Kevin, class of 1999, Troy, class of 1991. What do you remember? First of all, who'd you play Little Leopards for? And what do you remember about when you came into being coming a freshman football player in the Leopard tradition? Troy? Well, I'll tell you what. I played for the Rams. And back then they were maroon jerseys. Yeah, who's your coach, too? You got to oh, tell gosh, Thad, Thad Henderson. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so then uh, the Rams, two years, played offensive line for them at the old stadium. And then the Colts, uh, two years for them with uh, Greg Beatty. Yeah. He was our head coach back then. A lot of fun, a lot of great memories, a lot of uh, just, you know, get up early on Sunday morning, put it on the uniform, and just <laughs> waiting on 1 o'clock, you yeah. know? <laughs> Ken, what are you on right? Who'd you play for Little Leopards? So in Little Leopards, I played for the Rams. I played under uh, Dan Edgen okay. uh, one year, and then Doug Fleener the next. Yeah. So uh, we – Won the championship both years, so I remember right. that quite well. And then I played for the Colts also okay. uh, under Larry Goddard. Okay, cool, cool. So and then both of you guys came into your freshman year, and you came in, and we asked uh, various uh, guys we interviewed, but you came into Lucille Leopard football. You might have had some heroes. I know Troy's brother played before him, but what did you think about when you came into freshman year? Who who'd you play under, and what were some things you were excited about when you came to becoming Leopards? Yeah, so freshman year was uh, Coach Wheel. And Guy Hall, and both of those guys were like, you know, drill sergeants. They yeah. they, they made you toe the line and, and play disciplined. Um, but just coming in there, just having a chance to actually wear a leopard uniform. And, and, you know, all my life I wanted to play leopard football. I wanted to grow up and be like my brother and, and have a chance to get underneath the lights. And just that chance to play freshman football was just exciting. We had a tough year. We didn't do great. We had 16 guys on our football team. But we fought every week and, and did the best we could. And uh, eventually, you know, when we got the varsity football play for Coach Chrislip, we were able to turn the program around and bring in some 7-3 uh, season our senior yeah, year. Yeah, that really tur that turned the tide in the whole program there. Kevin, what are you on about entering your freshman year? So freshman year, I played for Coach Real and Coach Kudo. I remember those yeah. days quite fondly. That was uh, – some good times, uh, you know, growing up, uh, always admired, you know, uh, Brian Beatty, you know, yeah. uh, watching him, uh, uh, Robbie Arnold, uh, those guys back in the day. So Yeah. And it's like Kevin, uh, Coach Davis and I, we were young assistants. Remember Kevin coming up through and uh, part of a really good line group from what I remember right back in then. Yep. So Coach Davis, this is, I believe, your is this second, third year, I believe, doing this? Third year. Third year. Coach, third year is uh, doing freshman commitment night. So what? What came up with this idea? It's, it's very creative, real neat, new tradition to a program that has a lot of great old traditions. Yeah, you know, it's like we treat our football team as a family. And uh, it's important for us to bring the kids in, have dinner with their family, give them a chance to learn and meet all of us in a different setting, chance for them to celebrate the, uh, the conclusion of their little leopard and their transition into becoming leopard football players. And we wanted to, you know, like tonight, when we talk to the parents and the players, so this is one big family. I tell everybody that, uh, you know, this football program is like my family's third child. And so we spend a lot of time making sure that this one works and does well. And uh, we just wanted to make those connections, chance to celebrate leopard football and that magicness of being a leopard football player. We want the kids to understand that. And, you know, having a show like this tonight, appreciate the fact that you guys came out here and gave us that opportunity to let our players shine under the spotlight. Yep. And what you did tonight, I kind of briefly talked about. So we had in the locker room, they had basically had four stations. You want to explain yeah. real briefly? So, what? You know, in playing for Coach Chrislip and, you know, both Cotton and Rick Chrislip, they were always about passing on the tradition. OK, they wanted to make sure that we understood where we came from, what we were the tradition and what we were holding and where we had to put it. And so with tonight, you know, we wanted a chance for the kids to get to this publicity and see them under the lights of an interview have them do that mature thing 
And then they went in the locker room, they learned about the Touchdown Club, how that program, started by Doris Smucker, has been huge in the transition of Leopard football over the years. You know, that, t- that Touchdown Club got started when you were a uh, sophomore, yes. I think, okay? Or maybe a senior. I was a sophomore, played along, and this guy knows a little something about Doyle Schmucker. He married his daughter, uh, and I play along Brett, his brother-in-law, and that's when Doyle, my sophomore year, started that special yeah, time. So I remember going out and having a steak dinner out uh, out at the farm or somewhere out there. Yeah. But Yeah, so so we had that, and then, then they went in and heard from Doug Shook, and Doug Shook passed the tradition on. He uh, graduated in 1972, and he was able to talk about how Leopard football transformed themselves then and got on the winning ways in that strong 70s and, and, and you know, the, the domination that Leopard football put together there. And then uh, then they went into the tunnel and got a picture taken by the Louisville Herald. And, just, and at the end, they're, they're meeting the seniors and they're playing, uh, you know, backyard football with our seniors out there in the field. It was a great night. I appreciate doing this for our program. It's a really special night that's very unique to our program. So, Nate, this is, I'm sorry, I tell him I call him his son's name a bunch of times there. Kevin, so this is your second year coaching freshman football, right? A third year third coaching, year. second year as the head coach. Okay, there you go. And you were coaching, probably that you're coaching the Leopards for a decent amount, the Lions, right? Yes, 20 years. So 20 I'm years. 23 years into coaching now. Yes. And uh, we were all Leopard alumni, but little little Leopard alumni. And one night think, neat thing about the little Leopards is these aren't just dads coaching for a year or two. These are guys like you that commit endless years to, for consistency and for building that tradition. Um, and then you got an opportunity to coach freshmen. How was the transition from Little Leopards to freshmen? Have you enjoyed it? What have you learned? I've, it's, it's been living the dream, honestly. It's, it's been great. Uh, really was excited when Troy approached me to, uh, to join the group. I like to say I've coached for, for 20 years in a, a great tradition, rich program with which Little Leopards is. And, uh, you know, uh, Really respect all those guys that are down there and that sort of thing. Uh, coming up, it, it was different. It was it was the real game of football, and yeah. uh, not that it, it wasn't in Little Leopards, but uh, there's a, there was a lot to learn, and I've learned a lot over the last three years that I've been here, and uh, really respect all my coaches, you know, Coach Chris Lip and all them throughout the years, and, and you two uh, in yeah. general, and, and and what it takes to be a Leopard football coach. Yeah, and. Uh... Lewis has been built on a lot of big names, a lot of guys put the ball in the end zone, going back to Bob Gladio, talking about Ken and Coon. We had Brian Brady, Brian Beatty here, you know, going into Drew Coon and so forth. Uh, but Louisville's success is built on just hard-nosed, get-her-done guys, and these are two of them, guys in the trenches that are just move the line, make things happen, and uh, that's built in the weight room. And, Troy, you want to talk a little bit about, like, what you guys have been doing this offseason? Yeah, and- we've, we've had a fantastic offseason in the weight room. We, uh, we made some changes. We've changed our program. Kids are working hard, making tremendous gains. On top of that, we started our Battle Fridays. So not only are we doing things in the weight room, but we're working on our mental toughness and, and exhausting ourselves. We'll come out at 6 a.m. on a Friday morning. Some days it was 40 degrees outside. And some days we had to go in the gym. But uh, just an exhausting, uh, grueling battle that weans its way down tournament style to you know three guys that compete. For the, for the leopard belt, and uh, that's been huge for us. We're going to finish it off this Friday. We're going to go underneath the lights. We're going to lift at night, come up here at 10 o'clock, and then have our last battle underneath the lights on a Friday night. And, you know, the guys that make it through that, they're, we talk about, you know, that, that the game is a battle, and, it's, and you've got to be able to outlast, and, and you've got to be able to take it for four, 48 minutes. And, and our kids are learning that, showing that, and achieving that. And, you know, we know that this is that hard work leads to success. And, and the harder you push yourself, the more you can push yourself the next time. And so our kids are, are experiencing that. We've got a lot of great kids that are competing hard. Good. And I know for these incoming freshmen, you guys just don't throw them to the lines. I know you guys have kind of your own setup. I don't know if Kevin or either want to talk about, right, they start in their own kind of their own lifting program, right, separate from the varsity at first mm-hmm. and learning the, the ropes. you want to talk a little about that? Yeah, so what we did this year, we, we changed that up too. So we uh, we started at night. We started just doing a, a lift at night. Uh, so we'd bring the guys in, really teach them. The, the form is what we really concentrated on because it's, it's easy just to turn somebody loose and, and let them hit the weights and, and hope that they get bigger. But, yeah. but this time we, we've concentrated on, you know, how, how we reach our thousand pound club. We do the bench, we do the squat, we do the hang clean and we do the deadlift. Yeah. So we've been, uh, we work and concentrate on those four lifts and then mix some other stuff in between. 
Uh, we've actually seen quite a few gains. We did we did a little test about a month into it once they started getting their form, and then a couple months later we we did uh, you know like a three rep max type deal and uh, seen seen some substantial gains out of these kids. So. Uh, something that we, we haven't really done before, and I think it's been going well. Uh, we've had a lot of guys showing up, uh, you know, on a nice summer night with, with baseball and everything else going on. Out of 30 kids, we still have 22 there. So, I mean, we can't complain about that. we got a lot of buy-in from these guys. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, Troy, talk about, and both of you can talk about, what are you looking for as a transition? So these guys played against the Channel Leopards. What do you look like the, the ninth grade year? How are you seeing them evolve as players, I guess? So they're going from basically the little leagues, so now you're playing. Yeah. There's a lot of learning, you know, that goes involved, you know, because they're going to learn a lot more concepts. They're going to be position-specific. Um, but above and beyond anything else, it's the same thing that Coach Real, Coach Hall, Coach Kudo did. It's about making them tougher, making them better at tackling, making them better at blocking, making them better at ball control, all those fundamental football skills that win football games. And uh, so, you know, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a chance to put them in a position to be successful and then to execute the fundamentals of football. Put all that things together, then also to, to, uh, to start to combine as a team. You know, um, you know a lot, some kids come into this as being different groups of those four different teams. Um, and, and so being a chance to play with those guys that you were tackling on Sunday the year before, now they're helping you win. And so that, that bonding as a team. And, and tonight when they went out there and just started playing, you know, touch football at the end of this thing tonight, that, that says it all. This kid's having fun, enjoying football, and uh, gathering as a team. And, Kevin, I don't know if you want to speak a little bit too, like that transitional period of being a freshman. And now you're coaching it, you were it, your son went through it. Um, how do you see them throughout the year transition from an eighth grade kid to a end of ninth grade man? I guess really. Really, yes. I mean, it, it all comes down with what what coach said. It's it's that that team, that bonding that they have because they they do. They start out in their four little groups, and and then uh, eventually those walls come down, and and they start playing together as a team. And that's that's the big focus that we have right now is just uh, getting that that team mindset from senior clear down to freshman. Everybody's just one team. Asked one more question there. So, Troy, we're heading in the summer. So, tell us a little bit br briefly about what's the summer program yeah. looking like for Lebanon. So, this is the first year since I've been the head coach where we went back to the 10-day rule. So, there'll be 10 days of camp this summer, football camp, um, which has changed our summer a little bit. Um, so, we're kind of excited about it because we're going back to the things that we used to do. And, and June is a lifting month. We're going to spend June get, making gains in strength, chance for us not to have to do other things, but just – focus on the weight room and, and use those four or five weeks to get stronger. And then we'll head into July. We'll have our camp days in July. We have some passing scrimmages. We give the kids a week off at the end of July to go out on vacation, to relax. Football's a long season, okay? And, and it can be even longer the more you do in the summer. So we're trying to condense that into small windows, give them a chance to get a break. But uh, we want to learn. We, we're installing a new offense and new defense this year. So we want to give our ch kids a chance to learn that so that they can execute once they put equipment on. Yep. Well, coaches, I appreciate your contributions to our program throughout the decades now. I appreciate this very unique night that gives these guys a taste of being wearing the blue and white, and uh, we wish you the best of luck in the summer and this season. All right, thank you. That's going to wrap things up here for Stragget Media. I thank for uh, Rob Johnson and John Taggart on the production board. Appreciate them uh, giving an opportunity to showcase these young men tonight. Have a great night, everybody.